Hello everyone and welcome to another math tutorial. Our fourth video in chapter two is titled Algebraic Reasoning. And in this video, we're gonna go over many algebraic properties of equality that you are no doubt familiar with. Uh, we're gonna go over them by name and just practice using those uh, properties, solving some familiar algebraic equations as this is gonna help us uh, bridge the gap to geometric proofs very soon. The first two properties of equality I wanna go over are the addition and subtraction properties of equality. I'm gonna go ahead and begin by just writing those properties out for you. Uh, and then we'll go over maybe an example of each of them real quick. Okay, so our addition and subtraction properties of equality. First one says if A equals B, then A plus C is equal to B plus C. So this property allows us to add any real number to both sides of uh, an equation. And likewise, the subtraction property of equality is going to allow you to subtract something from both sides of the equation. So I'll give you an example problem. If I was solving the equation x minus three equals five, we all know that we are allowed to add three, but we have to do it to both sides. Okay, well that's addition property of equality that we're using right there. We're adding three to both sides of the equation. And similarly, if I gave you an equation like y plus seven equals 10, and I asked you to solve for y, well, we would all subtract seven from both sides. And that subtracting seven, that subtracting a number to both sides of the equation is illustrating subtraction property of equality. The next two properties of equality that go nicely together are multiplication and division properties of equality. So I'm gonna go ahead and write those out, and again, we'll talk about it, and then I'll show you an illustration of each of those properties. Okay, so the multiplication and division properties of equality, just like addition and subtraction, just simply allow you to uh, either multiply or divide by the same number to both sides of the equation provided that number is not zero. Um, if we divide by zero, it just cancels everything out on, well, multiply by zero, it cancels everything out on both sides. And of course, dividing by zero, we're not allowed to do that, that's undefined. So any number other than zero, and these properties hold true. Uh, so for the multiplication property, for example, uh, we've all seen equations like this, I'm sure. Uh, maybe x divided by two equals uh, five, and in order to solve that problem, what do we do? Well, we multiply both sides by that denominator, and then we solve from there. So that's multiplication property of equality that allows us to multiply both sides of the equation. Uh, division property of equality, you're very familiar. It's typically the last step in solving an algebra equation. Maybe we have something that looks like this. Uh, we all know that we would divide both sides by three to solve that equation. Well, it's the division by three to both sides uh, that is stated in this division property of equality right here. And again, as long as we do the same number to both sides, um, this property allows us to do that. Okay, the next two properties of equality. Uh, first one is substitution property of equality, and then the second one is distributive property. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'll write these out for you and then we'll talk just a little bit about them and we'll jump right into some full example problems. Okay, here are our two uh, properties of equality, substitution and distributive property. Uh, first one, substitution property says that if A equals B, then A can be substituted for B anywhere in the equation uh, or B in for A. Uh, you might use this property quite a bit when solving systems of equations. Uh, you've no doubt done, even as simple as like checking your work. Um, you know, if you have the equation uh, 2x plus 4 equals 10, 
and you solve this equation and you get x equals 3, well, when you check your answer and you substitute 3 in there, you are using substitution property of equality. Um, distributive property you've no doubt seen before, you've used before. Uh, most of you probably commonly draw lines or arrows uh, above the parentheses to illustrate that that number or variable is multiplying inside the parentheses to everything there. Uh, but that's called distributive property when you're doing that. All right, our example problem here says solve and justify each step. So it's this justifying of each step that's going to feel um, like it slows you down a little bit because we're not used to doing that. We're used to just flying right through a problem and solving it. Um, but we're going to practice that because we're practicing kind of the structure uh, that we're going to need when we're doing geometric proofs later in this chapter and throughout the course. Uh, so if I look at this problem, uh, the first thing that I might choose to do, uh, and you might choose to do something else different to begin, is maybe I decide to get all my x's together. So maybe I subtract 5x from both sides. And when I subtract 5x from both sides, I now have negative 2x minus 7 equals negative 19. Now, the justifying each step is to write down what I did to get to this step. So I did subtraction property of equality. Uh, now, maybe I would take this minus seven and I would add it to both sides. So that would give me negative two x equals negative 12. And what I did to get this step is I added that to both sides, so I used addition property of equality. And then finally, to finish this problem, probably going to divide by negative 2 to both sides. That's going to cross that out. I now have x equals 6. That's the end of the problem there. If I justify, so what I did to get here is I use the division property of equality. Okay, that's the finish of this problem, solving and of course, justifying all of the steps of my work along the way. Same directions on this next example, solve and justify each step. So uh, I think everybody watching this video has seen enough problems like this in the past to know that the first thing you're going to do is take this negative 2 and you're going to multiply it inside the parentheses there so that will leave me a result of 20 minus 6x plus 2 equals x minus 6 and the property that allows me to do that is the distributive property okay now after I've done that uh, there's a number of things that I could do next uh, but maybe you see these two terms that can be put together. We call that combining like terms. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I have minus 6x plus 22 equals x minus 6. Now that is not what I just did. I added those together, but that's not addition property of equality because I have not added anything over to this side. All I did was simply... Um, I can spell this right, is that I combine like terms. It's not one of my properties of equality, but it's okay. It's still uh, justifying what I did in that step. And so we want to go ahead and do that. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and get all my x's together. So I'm going to subtract this x from both sides. All right, that's going to cancel it out right there. And so that's going to give me negative 7x plus 22 equals negative 6 and I just used the subtraction property of equality. Now I'm going to take this positive 22, I'm going to subtract it from both sides. It's going to cancel out the 22, giving me negative 7x equals negative 28. I again used 
the subtraction property of equality. I'm going to finish this problem by dividing both sides by negative 7 to get x equals 4. That's my solution. The step that I did, the justification, is that is the division property of equality. Uh, so there, we're going to get some practice today in your assignment. Uh, solving equations, which is always a good thing, but then also justifying every step of the, of the process, um, which, which is not a bad thing to, to make you just kind of slow down, think about your steps, uh, but also it's, it's pushing us towards everything we need to start doing geometric proofs. We're going to close out this video with three more properties. Uh, first one is reflexive property. It's super simple to use. Uh, second one after that is symmetric property. So I'm going to go ahead and write them both down. I'll give you some examples of each of them. Okay, so the reflexive property um, just simply says A equals A. So it says that uh, any number, here's an example, is equal to itself. Uh, that's simply it. Um, the symmetric property you use quite a bit, right? How many of you have ever solved an equation that looks like this? And you get all the way down to the end and you get like one equals X and you don't like the way that looks because you like to read the X first and so you just simply flip it and you write X equals one. But when you do that, all right, when you change from this line to this line, you're using symmetric property of equality that says if A equals B, then B equals A, which is one equals X, then X equals one. So symmetric property allows you to pull that move that you're very familiar and comfortable doing, but that's what it's called. Okay, our last property is transitive property. Transitive property says, says if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Uh, so the idea here is that um, A is equal to B um, and then the same B is also equal to C. And so since A and C both equal the same thing, we can say that they in fact equal each other. Um, it's kind of familiar or, or similar to law of syllogism from the second video in this chapter, uh, but it's something that, uh, I'm even going to put a star by it, it's something that in our geometric proofs that we're going to do, uh, you actually will see this property uh, show up quite a bit. So learning to recognize it uh, and use it is going to be vital moving forward. Okay, the directions on this example slide are to identify the property illustrated. Uh, so this first one says that if A equals B, then 5A equals 5B. So when I'm looking at this to this, all I see different is this 5 is on both sides. And how is it connected to the variables on both sides? You could say it's multiplied. So for me, that then answers the question is what property we're using. We're using... The multiplication property of equality is what's allowing us to multiply both sides by five. In the next example, we say that if AB equals YZ and YZ equals 12, then AB equals 12. So here we've got AB equaling YZ. We also have 12 equaling the exact same YZ. So when I see this, I can kind of like imagine that this common YZ is removed from both of these statements and what's left are equal to each other. When I see that, that is my transitive property. Next example, number three says, if CD equals EF, then EF equals CD. So I have changed nothing, I have not added or or subtract it, multiply or divide anything to both sides. All I've done is just flip flop what's on the left and what's on the right. And that is an illustration of symmetric property. Okay, the final example, number four, says that if X equals Y, then X plus seven equals Y plus seven. So you can see that I have added seven to both sides. 
That is an illustration of the addition property of equality. All right, this final set of example problems, the directions are to use the property to complete the statement. So we are being asked to use the substitution property of equality to fill in the blank here. Uh, we know that x equals 10, then x plus y equals what? So the idea is to replace the x with 10 because that's what x equals. So I'm gonna say that x plus y is equal to 10 plus y. That's my substitution property of equality. I'm substituting one thing in for something else. Next, I have subtraction property of equality. So if AB equals EF, then AB minus XY. So this is what I've subtracted to the AB side. If I'm gonna use subtraction property of equality, uh, I have to do the exact same thing to the other side, the EF side. So I'm gonna write EF minus XY. And then finally, reflexive property. Recall that reflexive property is just stating that something is equal to itself. So the measure of angle XYZ is equal to the measure of angle XYZ. Okay, that concludes this video on section 2.4, which is algebraic properties of equality. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, I encourage you to leave them in the comment section below. If you found the video helpful, please support the channel by giving it a thumbs up. I wanna thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.